Stephen King's Salem's Lot. Dramatized in seven episodes by Gregory Evans. Episode four. You can imagine the situation we are in, Father. By that time, we knew what we were up against. Vampires. Vampires. <laughs> Maybe it trips off Mark's tongue, but the rest of us had a little trouble with the word. It's not so easy to get out. The church well knows that evil may take many shapes. Who knew this was happening? Uh, Matt Burke, me. Susan was coming around with the idea. I knew, Father. How did you know? Worked it out. I read monster mags and comic books. I know all about vampires. Unfortunately, Mark and me still hadn't met then, so we uh, couldn't compare notes. There was no one else. Well, I guess one or two others were asking themselves some tricky questions. God knows what answers they were getting. But there was a lot of pieces still missing. For instance, I had a bad feeling about the Marston house, but I didn't see how it all tied in with Straker or Barlow, except as a sort of beacon attracting evil. We didn't know then that in the 12 years before he shot himself, Hubert Marston had lively correspondence with an Austrian nobleman called Breiken, who later changed his name to Barlow. But things were starting to come together. And after Floyd Tibbetts put me in the hospital, I had plenty of leisure to think it all through. Ben, you asleep? Susan, my God, you look good. Come here. Mm. Oh. oh, I love you, Ben. I love you, too. Well, if I could jump in bed with you right now. Well, just let me pull back the sheets. <laughs> How would I explain it to the nurses? Yeah, tell them you're checking my uh, pulse. <laughs> ben? Yeah? A lot's happened in town. Like what? How much of this Count Dracula stuff do you really believe? Matt told you everything? Matt's here in the hospital. One floor up in intensive care. What? Why? Heart attack. Oh, God, how serious. Dr. Cody says his condition is stable. I was there when it happened. Oh, well, tell me about it. First, answer my question. Well, about vampires? Yes. Well, uh, let me guess what you think. You think the Marston house has screwed my brain, right? Well, I I'd never put it in such harsh terms, Ben, but I can't oh, believe... Stop. It. That word can't blocks up everything. That's where I got stuck. Tell me what happened last night and leave can't on one side for a while. Matt had just finished telling me about Mike Ryerson when he heard someone upstairs. Uh -huh. He was very scared, but he went up alone. I heard him call out, then... Oh, I can't. Oh, can't. Put it aside. Just tell me what happened. There was a thud, like something had fallen. I heard a voice. Uh, oh, whose voice? Well, it was odd. Distorted. It sounded like Mike Ryerson. What? It can't have been, of course. That word again. Ben, it can't. Mike's dead. Maybe it was a tape recording. Maybe... Oh, well, I don't know. Matt murdered Mike. Cooked up the vampire story and did a ventriloquist act while I was downstairs. Well, and gave himself a heart attack to make it all more real? Right. Something really happened to Matt. Something that scared him almost to death. But not vampires. It's not... It's not rational. No, there's, there's a lot going on in Salem's lot that's not rational. Uh, take your ex, for instance. I'm sorry, Ben. That's a side of Floyd I never saw. I can't understand it. Well, where's Floyd now? In jail. Parkins Gillespie's waiting to see if you want to press charges. Yeah. Well, I, I don't want Floyd charged, but I do want to talk to him. About us? No, about why he came at me wearing an overcoat, a hat, dark glasses, and gloves. What? Yeah. Yeah, the sun was out. It was shining on him. I don't think Floyd liked that. Hey, Floyd, wake up. I got your dinner. Hey, come on, Floyd. I got your dinner. Move yourself. 
Floyd, time to wake up. Nolly! Nolly! What the hell you doing in there, Nolly? Are you calling the hogs? Floyd Tibbetts won't move, Park. Don't seem to have shifted off his bunk for more than 20 hours. You think he's sick? Well, if he is, beating the bars with that goddamn tray won't make him any better. Here, give me the key. Careful, Park. Could be playing possum, waiting to jump you. Oh, Nolly, you've been watching TV again. <sighs> Floyd. Fl Floyd, are you all right? He's dead, ain't he? Oh, right the first time, boy. Jesus, he don't look dead. Looks more like he's cutting a few Z's. Yeah. Well, it's just like Mike Ryerson. Somewhere in here. Yes. Mr. Crockett. Oh, Jesus! You keep your treasures very secure. Who are you? And how the hell did you get in here? Damn place is locked tight. Please, Mr. Crockett. Right. I... Step out of the shadows. Keep your hands where I can see you, mister. Now, unless you want me to blow a hole in that fancy-looking suit... I am Barlow. Oh, shit. Straker's boss. I thought you were out of town. Not anymore. As you see, Mr. Crockett. Did Straker steal a key? Because if he did, I want it back. I'd done some stuff for you, and Straker paid me well. But this is a private office. Put the gun down, Mr. Crockett. It can do no good. No good. So many guns in America. Such faith in these toys. This is a strange land. I was told of your town by a brilliant man, a former townsman himself, now sadly deceased. He was right. The folk here are full-blooded, stuffed with aggression and darkness so necessary to... Uh, uh, there are no words for it in English. Yes, come to me, Mr. Crockett. I want to thank you for helping me to settle into your so perfect town. My pleasure. No. <laughs> no, no, no. Floyd Tibbetts is dead, Susan. died in his cell last night, acute anemia, but Floyd had high blood hey, pressure. Susan, and Larry down. Crockett was found dead in his office this morning. No signs of violence, no one had broken in. He was just dead. I've got to get out of this hospital. Ben, there's more. What? Mike Ryerson's body is missing from the morgue. That's it. Susan, have you got a crucifix? I've got some love beads. I'm serious. Can you get one tonight? I've got a girlfriend who's a Catholic. I could walk no, no, over... No, stay in the house. Make one. Leave it by your bed. Ben, I don't believe this. I don't care what you believe. Just make the cross. Humor me, please. Okay. Can you come to the hospital tomorrow around 10? Yes. Good. We'll go up and see Matt. Tell him everything that's happened. Then we'd better talk to Dr. James uh, Cody. He'll think you're crazy, Ben. You must know that. Maybe. But it all seems more real after dark. Wouldn't you say? The evil was spreading quickly. Yes. Far more quickly than we ever realized. And you, Mark. Father? You were confronted with one of these creatures. Yeah. Ben and me worked it out later. It must have been that same night after Danny Glick's funeral. Mom and Dad had gone to bed. 
I was asleep. Then something woke me. A noise in the dark. Who's there? Mark. Mark, it's me. Danny. My friend Danny. Who I'd seen buried just a few days before. He was staring through the glass. His face pale. His eyes red. Something dark smeared around his mouth. I understood right away. Not only because of all the magazines and models and stuff, but because I was so frightened. Open the window, Mark. Let me come in. No! I've come to play with you. I don't want Just to play. Just like I promised. Don't you remember? Go away! You're dead! You're dead! You were going to show me your models. Your monster models. Will you show me? Come to the window, Mark. It's not so bad. Look into my eyes. Not so bad. And you won't be afraid anymore. Open the window, Mark. Say, come on in, Danny. Say it! No! Mark! You can't come in, can you? Not unless I invite you. Let me in. I command it. He commands it. In vain he thrusts his fists against the post. Mark? Who still insists he sees the ghosts. In vain Mark? he thrusts his fists against the post. And still insists he sees Mark? the ghosts. In vain he thrusts his fists against Ask the post. Inside, Mark. And still insists he friend. sees the ghosts. In vain, He'll be your friend. Against the post, and still insist he sees the rest of the In vain, he thrusts. Ask me inside. All right. You want to see my monsters? What about this one, the ghoul, walking through a graveyard? Remember it? Come on in, Danny. Take a closer look at the cross! <laughs> when I touched him with that little plastic cross broken off the model, it went through his flesh like he was smoke. So I kept a hold of it as I went back to sleep. Matt Burke faces something like that. He gets a heart attack brought on by fright. Mark. He turns over and goes back to sleep. I guess that's the difference between men and boys. I heard Mark's story much later, of course. But the next morning, Susan and I were in a room at the Cumberland Hospital, listening to the account of a similar event. He, his chest was pale and thin. And when he saw the crucifix, I must stop saying he. That wasn't Mike Ryerson. It called out something and then went backwards out of the window like a diver off a board. I heard Susan call out from downstairs. That's right. My chest filled with pain. I keeled over, saw the crucifix in my hand, and felt glad I had it. Next thing I know, I woke in here, hooked up to all these nasty machines. So, what do you think of this hearsay? Well, ever since Susan told me her side of the story, I... I've been trying to find some rational explanation for it all. So far, I've failed. And you, Susan? Who used to write such well-organized essays? Well, Ben warned me off Kant yesterday, so let's just say I find it hard to believe that vampires are stalking Salem's lot. Even so, I propose that we proceed on the premise that all of this is real and abandon that premise if and only if it's conclusively disproved. You don't think it will be, do you? No. I know what I saw. So, Ben, what now? Well, I... I appoint you researcher general. You've got the qualifications and you're off your feet. Oh, splendid. I'll get library books sent here by the truckload. Anything and everything on the subject. What will you be doing? Well, first, Dr. Cody. He examined Ryerson and Tibbetts. Perhaps we can persuade him to exhume Danny Glick. Would he do that? Well, the Jimmy Cody I had in my class would. 
He was an imaginative, open-minded boy. But he's been through med school since then. All this is very roundabout. Why don't Ben and I just go up to the Marston house? Well, and... and put our heads in the lion's mouth? I thought vampires slept during the day. Uh, whatever Straker may be, he's no vampire. Unless the legends are completely wrong. Well, let's go and find no. out. No, no, absolutely not. Okay. When will you see Cody? In half an hour. He's due to give me a checkup before I'm discharged. I'll see him then. Susan? Well, I've got to go home and do some packing. I'm moving out tomorrow. Ben, I'll call you this afternoon. Mm-hmm. Any dizziness and nausea? No, Dr. Cody, I feel fine. I'll decide that. Any double vision? Not since the last time I bought a gallon of Thunderbird. <laughs> All right, I pronounce you cured by the wonders of modern science and by virtue of a hard head. Right, now what's on your mind? Uh, that's a tricky one. Is it about Floyd Tibbetts and Larry Crockett? Well, it... I can only tell you what I told Parkins Gillespie. I'm damned if I know who'd do such a twisted thing. I'm not with you. Well, you don't know? No what? That someone snatched their bodies from the Cumberland County morgue last night. Oh, God. Do you know anything about this? Yes, I, uh, think I do. Dr. Cody, I got some stuff you ought to hear. Vampires. Matt Burke, of all people. That makes it awfully hard to laugh off. Yes. And you want me to exhume the Glick kid? Will you do it? <sighs> Catch, huh? Aspirin. Ever use them? Of course. You know how they work? No. Neither do I. Neither does anyone. It's white magic. My med school profs would tear their hair out if they heard me say that. And they'd roll on the ground and have fits if they knew I was going to request an exhumation order for the Glick boy. You'll do it? What can it hurt if he's dead? He's dead. And if he's not? <laughs> I'll have damn good material for my lecture to next year's AMA convention. Right now, it'll speed things up if I can get the parents' permission. I'll tell them... Uh, I'm going to look for signs of infectious encephalitis. I'll call them now, test the water. I hope they don't make a fuss. You realize Danny Glick is the only corpse we got a marker for. All the rest have vanished into thin air. <clears throat> Hello, uh, Tony Glick. No, it's Constable Gillespie. Oh, uh, hi, Park. Uh, Jimmy Cody here. Hi. Uh, I need to speak to Tony or Marjorie Glick. Well, Mrs. Glick collapsed and died early this morning, and uh, Tony Glick's in Central Maine General. He, uh, he's in shock. I see. Hmm. Which is why I'm standing here in their hall answering their phone. Anything I can do for you, Doc? Uh, uh, no, no, I don't think so. Except, uh, could you tell me where they took Mrs. Glick's body? You know, Ben, this is a paranoid dream. How many people in the lot could drop out of sight and not be missed for a month? Two hundred? Three? Oh, surely not. There's no industry here. People work in Portland or Lewiston or Gates Falls, so a rise in absenteeism wouldn't be noticed. Same with the schools, and TV has killed off the old neighborhood get-togethers. A vampire colony could form in Salem's lot, but no one would know. Uh. It, it could be happening now. People lying in closets, in, in cellars, waiting for dusk. And next day, bang, less people on the street. Hey, let's take it easy, shall we? I mean, none of this is proven. If we were dealing with typhus, the town would be in quarantine by now. I doubt that. Don't forget, only one person has actually seen anything. Well, hardly the town drunk. <sighs> True. We'll be at Maury's in five minutes. I better get my story straight. Mrs. Miller, this is Susan Norton. Is Ben there? I'm sorry, Susan. He got in from the hospital about 2.30 and went out straight away with Dr. Cody. Did he say when he'd be back? Not to me. Oh, thanks, Mrs. Miller. Can I give him a message? Tell him... Tell him I'm trying the direct approach. Say I've gone to the house. The house? He'll know where I mean. And tell him not to worry. I'll take precautions. 
Maury, I, uh, I want you to meet a good friend of mine. Maury Green, Ben Mears. Good to meet you, Maury. Shalom, Ben. Any friend of Jimmy's? Maury, uh, we've come to ask a favor, a big favor. Hey, and what have you ever done for me? <laughs> ask Jimmy anything. You've got Mrs. Glick here. Downstairs. Poor lady. So much tragedy in one family. And she looks so sweet. She was your patient? No, but uh, Ben and I, we'd like to sit up with her this evening, Maury. Sit up? Examine her, you mean? No, just just sit up with her. Has she got something? Something infectious? Not in the accepted sense of the word. Is it okay? Sure, sure. I thought you said a big favor. This may be bigger than you think. I'll make some coffee, then I'm up home. Here's the keys to the embalming suite. Lock up when you go. Thanks, Maury. Anytime, Jimmy. Uh, just do one thing. Of course, what? If she says anything, write it down. <laughs> Hmm? Nine carats. Very popular design. Uh, yeah, I... I wanted something a little more... religious. Everybody's buying crucifixes suddenly. I'm sorry? This is the third I've sold today. What's happening in the lot? A religious revival? Hmm. Interesting. No visible trauma. Without an autopsy, it's impossible to say how she died. But her condition is strikingly similar to Mike Ryerson's. You can see for yourself, no surface lividity. No rigor. If I didn't know, I'd say she'd been dead all of five minutes. And now? We wait. You out for a drive, Miss Norton? Hi, Nolly. I'm afraid I've taken a wrong turn. Guess you must. This road don't lead nowhere but the Marson uh, Is that where you've just been? Guess so. Oh, did you meet the mysterious Mr. Barlow? What's he like? Everyone's dying to know. Lord knows. There's no one there. So, Mr. Straker... No uh... sign of him. Okay. You better drive to the end, Miss Norton. Then turn round, head back the way you came. See ya. Bye, Nolly. Green's mortuary, Jimmy and I sat in vigil around the stainless steel table that held the draped corpse of Marjorie Glick. According to the paper, sunsets at 7.02. It's, uh, five more minutes. Mm -hmm. oh, I doubt if vampires rise at Almanac sunset. I, I mean, if they exist. Oh, God. Ben, I've just thought, uh, where's your cross? Cross? Jesus, I don't have one. Oh, um, uh, pass me my bag. Okay. Um, uh, tongue, tongue depressors. Uh, and uh, adhesive tape. Adhesive tape, yeah. And here, let me yeah, wrap that around there. There, yeah. Oh, great, okay. One instant crucifix. <laughs> Smart, huh? Now, uh, uh, bless it or something. Bless it. I don't know how. Well, you're the writer. Use your imagination. But for Christ's sake, hurry. Something's about to happen. I can feel it. Can't you feel it? Yes. Uh, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, and the Virgin Mary, bless this makeshift cross and let it... Bless it! The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth, he leadeth me in the paths path of, of righteousness. For his name's sake, yea, yea though I walk, walk through the, the valley of the shadow, shadow of death, I, I will fear no evil. Oh, my God. Marjorie Glick's hands snaked out from below the sheet. Her fingers danced jaggedly in the air, twisting and turning. Am I seeing this? Oh. Danny. Danny, darling. Where are you? Stay right there. Get back. Come here. Come to me. Jimmy, don't look at her. Don't look at her eyes. 
Where is my son? What have you done with him? The cross, the cross! Use it! I noticed for the first time that the cross was glowing. Bluish light spilled over my hand. I can feel it! I can feel the power! That's it. Now drive her back. I'll grab her from behind. Jimmy, no! Got her! Jimmy! She fell on him like a flash, ripping at his collar. I saw the predatory lunge of her head, the yawn of her jaw. No! I grabbed her hair and yanked her up. Then I remembered the cross. I drove the makeshift crucifix hard under the chin. It continued upward with no resistance. In the name of God, go! Go from this place! I'll be back for you, me, or others. And soon there will be so many others. <laughs> As I watched, her body seemed to elongate and become translucent. One moment she was there, laughing. The next, she was gone. Oh, oh God. Her mom, her dirty, filthy Jimmy, mom. Jimmy, she's gone. It's okay. She bit me. Oh, my God, she bit me. me. Ben, don't touch me. I'm unclean. What can I do? My bag. Get my bag. Jesus, Ben, I can feel it in there. I can feel it working in me. What am I looking for? Disinfectant. That's this? Here. Yes, on my throat. There are two punctures. They're the jugular. One's fairly clean. The other's... Pour it in. Right in the wound. The blood's washing out. Put the cross on my neck. If I'm still dirty from her, he'll do something. Hold still. Nothing. Oh, oh. Thank God. Oh. I thought I was going mad. When she was doing it, I... I liked it, Ben. That's the hellish part. If you hadn't been Just here... Just don't think about it. Oh. There's one more thing I have to do. Something I don't like. What's that? Help me up, Ben. Okay. Oh, we could be in big trouble. We must get our stories. Ah! Oh! No! Oh! As Jimmy slugged me, stars swirled in my brain. I fell heavily, groping madly for the cross, thinking, You fool. You stupid, stupid fool. Who's here? I know there's someone there. Please. Come out now. Show yourself. You have been listening to episode four of Salem's Lot by Stephen King. With Stuart Milligan as Ben Mears, Teresa Gallagher as Susan Norton, and Danny Canaber as Mark Petrie. Doug Bradley played Barlow, Gavin Muir, Matt Burke, Kerry Shale, Jimmy Cody, Peter Yap, Father Grathon, Don Fellows, Parkins Gillespie, Matt Zimmerman, Larry Crockett, David Freed, Danny Glick, Francis Jeter, Eva Miller, George Parsons, Nolly Gardner, Raymond Sawyer, Maury Green, and Natasha Pine, Marjorie Glick. Salem's Lot is dramatized in seven episodes by Gregory Evans, with music composed by Elizabeth Parker of the BBC Radiophonic Workshop. The director is Adrian Bean.